Well, good morning, insiders. Today we are going to talk about strategy number two in successful short sale tips. Uh, what I'm what I'm doing is I'm taking the core concepts of our short sale training that you've all been through in our network, and I'm breaking them down into quick ten or less minute um, kind of bullets for you to, to re-digest and it's not that you don't know this information and it's not that this information is all encompassing because I'm not going to be able to cover in 10 minutes what took me an hour or an hour and a half in a class type setting but uh, this will give you the key points it will help you kind of hone those skills again especially if it's been a while since you've uh, done them so tip number two is one of our top two strategies uh, that we have in regard to short sales and I would say it's either number one or number two and depending on who you ask I think it's number one Jessica thinks it's number two um, but it is the BPO factor is what we call it and it's working with your BPO agents to make sure that your BPO is accurate to the value of the property the other one the one that we'll all talk about it uh, on another video is the excite price system and that's the one that Jessica would argue is the most important but really the two of them go hand in hand and so the combination of the two are the most important strategies that you can uh, know and understand and be implementing in your short sale business so let's get into the BPO factor um, how to work with your BPO agents so step number one make sure you're meeting your BPO agents at the property this would be just the same thing that you do when you have uh, a buyer's appraiser and you meet your buyer's appraiser at the property to make sure that they understand the value. Just like an appraisal on a purchase loan will kill a transaction, a BPO that is incorrect will kill a transaction too. So um, depending on markets and time, you know, there's whether the market's going up or the market's going down, appraisers tend to be a little bit behind the curve if you leave them to their own devices. And so uh, my encouragement and what many agents have found strategically, even with their uh, the appraisers for the buyer's loan, is to make sure they understand all the things and why this property is worth what the buyer is willing to pay. Because if they think that it's worth less than what the buyer is willing to pay, then you won't get that property sold to that buyer. And in a BPO situation on a short sale, if the bank thinks the property is worth more, it's completely inverted, if the bank thinks the property is more or the appraiser thinks it's more, then the market value, you're not going to get that short sale sold either. And so it's that important. Step number one, make sure you're meeting that BPO agent or appraiser at the property. It gives you the ability to interact with them, give them helpful information and make sure they don't miss any key items within that property that may influence uh, what the value of the property is. All right, number two, provide helpful information to that BPO agent. And this is quite inclusive. I'm not going to go into everything that you can give them. Um, but comparables, give them a list of comparables that you've done research on. Give them three sold and three active. Now there is there are specific requirements. I'm going to encourage you to go back and listen to the uh, conference call that we did. BPO Factor Enhanced is what we call it. And that is where one of our network agents who's also a BPO agent went through and explained all the vari variances. You know, how much can you vary in square footage, bedroom, bathroom distance from the subject property, all those details based on whether it's urban, uh, suburban, rural, all of those items affect how far away you can go in your radius search. And so uh, go back and listen to those details. That was about an hour long conference call that goes into all the details that a BPO agent um, needs to have and how you can help them. But uh, for example, on your square footage, I believe it's 20% variation, 20 or 25% variation that you can go on your square footage. Square footage is more important than even age uh, or build type. And that was a huge revelation to me that they really want to know what the square footage is. And here's another little um, freebie here is that it's above grade square footage. It's not below the grade square footage that they're looking at. And so that can be really helpful because as a real estate professional, you're thinking, all livable square footage, whereas a BPO agent, really, if they know what they're doing, is only looking at above grade square footage. And that is what they're, they're required to put on their reports. And that is what you should be providing them uh, when you're bringing them comparables. If there's repair needs, this is also still under number two, providing helpful information uh, for the BPO agent. If there's repair needs, don't make that BPO agent take the time to go out and look for a bunch of repairs. They're getting 50 or 60 bucks for this BPO, maybe less. 
um, they're not going to take a bunch of time to go out and get a contractor to give them a bunch of quotes. That could take hours for them to do. You take that on yourself to prepare that and give that to them so that they have the data they need to do the BPO correctly, but it's not going to take them hours and hours and hours to do it. Okay, listing and showing history, and this ties in directly with the other strategy that I talked about earlier, the Excite Price System. If you're doing your Excite Price System properly and you're tracking that, then you're going to have a whole bunch of data you can give this BPO agent so they can see where you started, where you came to, what kind of showings you were getting, what the feedback was from different agents. All that information uh, is able to be compiled in a really simple report to help support the value that the property is at now, where the offer came in, and those type of things. All right, number three, uh, what I call micro market research. Micro market research. Uh, market research obviously is uh, on a large scale your city that you live in, or your county, or depending on how you would cons what you would consider your market. Um, micro market is down to the property within a few miles of the subject property at max. What is that? Maybe it's a grid on your um, MLS map or a grid within your MLS map. Um, within that small market, what is what is going on? Is it short sale REO driven? Some macro markets, larger markets, are short sale REO driven. If you're in Southern California, uh, Phoenix, Nevada, anywhere in Arizona really, um, you're probably in a short sale and REO driven market. But in other areas, the the major market may not be short sale REO driven, but some micro markets within that market are. And that is important information because if you can show a high percentage of short sale REO, your BPO agent can actually utilize those in their, their report. Otherwise, they're not supposed to utilize short sale and REO properties as comps. The banks tell them to throw it out. They don't want to know that. They want to know what the actual market value is, even though the property can't sell for that since it is a short sale. So uh, crime in that micro market. Uh, sex offenders, what what other data and research can you pull together that is helpful um, within that smaller market for that BPO agent to help them understand why the property is selling for what it's selling for? All right, number four, be helpful, not arrogant. And this is just a, a piece of advice. You know, we all like to help people that we like and BPO agents and appraisers are the same. If you go in and you're trying to tell them all this and tell them all that and it comes across highly arrogant instead of helpful, they're not really probably going to want to help you very much. They actually, you could take it to the point where they actually want to get a little bit ticked off at you and they want to not do a good job on your BPO because they don't really want to help you at all because you're so irritating. So be helpful, build rapport, uh, find points of common connection, you know, things that you can relate with them on. I know you have a very short period of time. Sometimes it's just a phone conversation and a quick meeting at the property. But within that short amount of time, you need to build some, some form of relationship so that this uh, BPO agent feels like they, they know you, they want to help you, they understand the situation. Um, they're doing their job, but uh, being helpful instead of arrogant is really going to help you do that. And then when you bump into that same BPO agent multiple times, you're going to have continued rapport built and more relationship. And pretty soon there's going to be an actual relationship that they will want to actually help you um, still doing their job. I mean, they're not going to do something that they, they shouldn't. But... Um, again, they want people want to help people that they like. So that's all I have uh, for the BPO factor uh, success short sale success tip number two. And uh, good luck in your BPOs. If you have any questions on this or any of the other strategies that we're going over, please let me know. I'd be happy to get on the phone, get on an email, and, and uh, discuss them with you. So uh, much success in your short sales, and we'll talk to you soon. Have a great week. Bye bye.